making sure that we link learning between different learning areas. So you will find that there are some subjects that have composite names. That does not mean that we have copied and pasted. Indeed, when you pick the new designs, including two learning areas which were rationalized first, social studies and the integrated science, we have not simply copied and pasted what belonged to one learning area and heaped it on another. We have re-rationalized the strands and the substrands up to the point that now they reflect innovation. Now, Mr. Nzioka himself in his own words said that the capture is now transforming to be leaders of pedagogy in your spaces. And we want to plead therefore that as these new designs come to us, we are able to explain to our staff that yes, there is some rationalization that has happened. But I can guarantee this country, because I know I'm also on air, that KICD also develops the curriculum for teacher, student teachers. Primary school teachers as they are have been teaching our children up to standard eight and they pass examinations. You are able to successfully facilitate learning of those learners up to grade nine. So let nobody tune near you. You are able to do that work. That is something that needs to be put in this country. And therefore, I challenge anyone who says that grade seven has been a wasted year for our learners to tell me this head teacher who will keep children in school and they're just laughing around and nobody is teaching them. So I have come to your schools all over this country from here uh, last year, week alone, I was in Anabkoi. Uh, I, I, was, I went all the way to Webuye. Now this week, I'm in Mombasa. The other day, I was in a school called Langobaya. I have been assured in this country that learning is taking place actively. Now, yes, make that clap louder to motivate me to continue. Thank you. You also asked me to talk about innovating learning, I mean the curriculum, and innovating pedagogy. Now, let me give you only about five things to remember that we must keep thinking about principles as we talk about what is new in this curriculum. What is the innovation in this curriculum? What's the, need, the difference between this curriculum and the other one? Number one, that we want to make learning interesting. Say interesting. If nothing is of interest, if you don't have sufficient interest in an activity, then you don't have sufficient motivation to study it. In my role as a university lecturer, I've always told my students when they are doing postgraduate studies, when you choose a topic, and there are many of them here, choose one that you are sufficiently interested in to wake up at dawn to be able to spend your time reading. Number two, experience. So the first one is interest. Ladies and gentlemen, in some other bigger words, we call this experientialism. Say experientialism. Yes. If you want to be given a VIP tent where I come from, you must arm yourself with a few big words when you are making a speech. So chairman, you know where to take me after today. Please, make sure that the learners with you, using the resources at your disposal, have the opportunity to experience that which they are learning. And I'm very proud of what you do, ladies and gentlemen. I've come to your schools, public schools, and I've seen children being able to weave. I've seen children improvise even microphones and re make reports like journalists who are trained. I have seen people sing, create instruments, and perform like a whole band, and some have been circulating. I actually, I have challenged my colleagues in private, in some sectors, who say that CBC was meant for private school learners. Let them come into our public schools and they see what head teachers have been able to do with the resources that they have. Because I have come to your school and seen you produce wonderful Sukuma Wiki. I've seen, I went to a school called MM Shah. I don't know if uh, that uh, Lego man is here. Tall gentleman. The most, one of the most organized head teachers I've come across. Mr. Barongo, this fellow has a complete modern poultry. 
that is being run completely by the students. This is already here. Now, Chairman, I know some of your people who are skiving. You can see I'm mentioning them. Eh? Yes. We have been able to do that through experience. The third one, colleagues, related to that is practicality. Say practicality. I don't want to say that more than Dr. Mabonga captured it. And Dr. Mabonga has given us a formula. A formula that I also want to advocate. After talking to SEPU, you can also talk to KSED. That we can get ways of even improvising those laboratories. We can use the science kits which have been approved by KSED. We can use the mobile labs. And we can give you ideas through CDF and other avenues on how we can get them in school. I have seen some of you walk with children to neighboring secondary schools and have them go through experimentation. I've seen some of you invite uh, secondary school science teachers to come and do experiments in your school. Who is this who is saying that grade seven has a wasted year for an RDE? That is practicality. The fourth innovation we are making in the curriculum is utility, say utility. Ladies and gentlemen, at whatever level the learners are, we want to be able to look at everything we teach in a strand or in a substrand in terms of its practical value to the environment where the children are. That is what we call a competency. And hence, one of the key competencies in that curriculum is problem solving. At the end of the day, we go to school so that we can solve problems. So in every strand and every substrand, there is a link to pertinent and contemporary issues. We have a challenge there to teachers and uh, even learners that what is the product, what is the outcome of this trend in terms of day-to-day -day living? Even when you teach English language like me and you have gone to teach children listening at grade four, at the end of the day, we should be able to give the, list, the children a listening task and recall that indeed they were able to separate that which was important to listen to from the noise that we hear out there. That is utility value of the curriculum. The last one, that one of the changes, the key innovations in this curriculum is the question of transforming teachers into action researchers. And I know uh, Dr. Manyasa has talked about it soon. Being a researcher myself, we are saying that that classroom of yours is a laboratory for diagnosing the needs, the challenges, and other variables that we might want to give feedback to KSED to think about, give feedback to NEC to think about, give feedback to publishers, including government, KLB, to think about. Transforming ourselves as teachers into action researchers. So these days, when I come to your schools and I talk to your teachers, I tell them, that when I hear you talk in that 30 minute lesson for more than 10 minutes, that lesson is a failure. Can I hear you talk for five minutes and children are doing things for the next 25 minutes? As I close, you told me to talk about innovating curriculum and pedagogy. Now, what about a pedagogy? In terms of pedagogy, anytime somebody says pedagogy, think about four things. Now, this one I'm saying as a professor of teacher education. You can quote me on this. One of the things you think about as a pedagogist is planning. Say planning. As we prepare to teach CBC learners, planning is important. Let us spend even one hour or, or, or four hours planning in terms of what is it, what are the experiences I want these learners to have? What is going to be the competency that I target out of these experiences? What will the children be able to do to demonstrate this knowledge? Planning. The next thing, say teaching and learning. After planning, you go to class. That is the time now you say good morning. And a few of us say, after, shortly after saying good morning, they ask the children, do you understand? Even before they have spoken. Eh? Good morning, children. Good morning, sir. Do you understand? Now. Teaching and learning is an art, ladies and gentlemen. Now we are saying, and the, and the principles we are talking about are nothing rocket science. Teaching from the known to the unknown, from the simple to the complex, collaborative learning, 
using examples, linking to the uh, practical issues things children can talk about, taking them out, basic issues. So we are now saying, as you go into that class to teach and learn, or my brother, my sister, as you walk around the teaching and learning spaces, if you hear a teacher whose voice dominates the classroom, let alone have a cup of tea with them and tell them that I did not hear the children make noise. If you hear class where the children are loud, they are vibrant, they are walked out, they are touching, they are employing all the six senses, then we know teaching and learning is taking place. That is item number two in pedagogy. Item number three in pedagogy is resources. Say resources. Yes. I want to say that one job where most of the resources we need to teach or to deliver is teaching. Let me again give the example as a teacher of English language. That looking at these tools here, if I had a classroom, it doesn't matter that I'm teaching pre-primary or that I'm teaching senior school. A lot of this is already my laboratory and I can use all these resources. Can we just think without the box a little bit and we don't realize that we have a lot of resources that we are right now able to use. However, I am in this space, ladies and gentlemen, for three years and I can tell you the government is really, really trying. Against fights like education takes 29% of our budget. It is something that the government is going out of its way to sacrifice to do. I have accompanied my peers and my CS as they negotiate for us to be able to have curriculum designs distributed, to be able to have books in every learning area distributed to every learner on a one-to-one -one ratio. And do you know what has happened from grade eight? From grade eight for every learning area, you're going to have two books. So in mathematics, we'll give you, if you have 100 children, we'll give you 60 books by one publisher, let us call it KLB, and 60 books by another publisher, let us call them Oxford. I saw Mwazemba somewhere. Yes. Now, those are some of my clients elsewhere. Why are we doing that? Again, innovation. That we want to expose learners to more materials. So from grade 8, and by the way, let me clarify, grade 8 books, will come to us in the manner that they were earlier thought about before the rationalization was done. We are doing that so that we save time. So for example, you may find that the subject we have been calling home science and the subject we have been calling agriculture, which have been separate at grade seven, now have been rationalized elsewhere. The books will still come independently. But from grade nine, we shall align the books to the nine learning areas. And so that I don't forget, under the guidance of my peers, Dr. Belio Kipsang, KICD has actually developed curriculum designs even for grade nine. And the books for grade nine are going to be evaluated from 30th of November to December. Call up for KICD. We are ahead. And my peers has promised me that this time round, we should be distributing grade nine books to you in May next year. So the government has really tried in terms of resources. I can tell you that recently we hosted a curriculum developers conference at KSCD. We had 42 countries participating. None of those other countries has the government resourcing their schools as much as the Kenya government can do. You can Google, you can research, I can assure you the government is trying its best. So that was about resources. The third thing we need to talk about pedagogy is about assessment, say assessment. That one I leave to our brother, Dr. Jagari, to talk about. But let me say this, that the fact that as our children do Kipsea, we already know, I sit on the board of the Kenya National Examinations Council and I can report. We already have and know 60% of their marks. So that the 40% we are looking for out of that assessment means that we have already got the raw potential of the learners. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The last part of the topic you asked for me is how this can transform. And I want to say, with the points I have talked about in terms of in terms of uh, the curriculum, innovating the curriculum and innovating pedagogy, we'll be able to transform this country. Transform it to what? At KICD, the vision which we shared up to now, we want to transform our learners as they leave our basic education to be engaged, empowered, and ethical. And Mr. Nzioka unpacked this when he was talking about all the key issues the presidential working party reformed. Engaged means you have, the graduates of our school system have something useful to do that contributes to the socioeconomic development of this country. Empowered means that our learners have the self-efficacy to be able to question things around them and do things that inform, including matters corruption, they can deal with it. They have the power to absorb their ethical, their civic duties as citizens. And ethical means they are moral, they behave well. That way, we'll transform this country. Education is visionary. Some of the outcomes of this system we shall only see when people start to graduate from our basic education. But I can assure you that we have already started seeing from what our children are beginning to do. Sometimes when I hear some little noise from parents, and we are also parents, aren't we? I say yes. We are achieving what we intend. When I hear parents say, for example, that the children now have made us go home early. Our not we succeeding? When people go home early, you know what that means, eh? They are engaged. When our children can now face their parents, they are in a vehicle, and they are telling their parent, mommy, daddy, don't throw rubbish out of the window. Keep it, we shall dump it somewhere. We know our children are now learning. When our children are now able to tell us, I have not seen you at home and you are supposed to be my dad. What kind of attention do you think I am lacking? Something is working that is already being seen. God bless Kepsha. Let us continue partnering as Anteni Sana. You can give me my gift and I go away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, this guy will always amaze you. Professor Charles Ogondo, the amazing prof, can now be awarded. Ameweza am hayaweza. Apewe asipewe. And get a beautiful. Thank you very much. Another clap, a round of applause to Professor Charles Ongundu, CEO KICD.